Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, I will be teaching you how to create this Pareto chart which gives you insight into your data and see the sales amount by subcategories and also look at the cumulative sales amount and be able to sort of identify which are those categories which contribute to 80% of your sales amount like the ones highlighted here in blue are the categories which contribute to 80% of the sales amount and the remaining categories here in red contribute to the remaining 20% of the sales amount. Now I have also incorporated this along with the new button slicer which will basically help you toggle the line on and off here which is showing you the cumulative sales percentage. So when you toggle this button over here you'll be able to turn off the line and then when you toggle this back you will be able to see the line again. So this is what I will be teaching you today so let's get started with this tutorial. So let's get started with this tutorial. First of all, let's start by creating a couple of measures. So first let's create a measure called total sales. I'm gonna type in total sales is equals to calculate sum of my sales amount from my orders table. So this is our first measure. Now let's add in a table over here and let's bring in our subcategory and total sales amount into this particular table. And now let's create another measure. This time we will have to rank our subcategory based on the sales amount. So I'm gonna create a measure, rank measure here. Let's use the rank x function. Now if you want to know in detail about the rank functions, I have made a separate tutorial on my channel about the rank and rank x function. Do check that tutorial out. So rank x, I'm gonna say all selected, all selected pass in my subcategory field which I have used here in my table, close the bracket here, comma, the expression here is going to be my total sales amount. I'm gonna close the bracket here and confirm. Let's bring in the rank into our table. And when I saw the total sales by descending order over here, you will see that our sales here have been ranked by the highest value. And now let's calculate the cumulative sum of our total sales. So let's start by creating another measure. I'm gonna call this as cumulative sales is equals to, let's start by defining the variable over here. Let's call this as current rank is equals to, I'm gonna say rank and let's define another variable here. I'm gonna call this as cumulative rank is equals to and say add columns filter all selected. I'm gonna pass in the subcategory field that we have used in our table followed by a comma and then say my rank measure is less than equals to current rank. I'm gonna close the bracket here to close the filter function followed by a comma. Let's give it a name over here. I'm just gonna give some random name. Let's just call it as rank underscore cumulative followed by a comma and then pass in the total sales measure over here. Let's close the bracket here and then say return. I'm going to use the sum x function. I'm going to say cumulative rank comma and total sales. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. Let's bring in this particular measure into our table and see what happens. So as you can see over here, we've started to get the cumulative sales by subcategory. So the first row over here is 989126. The second row gets added and brings in the total sales amount of these two categories. And now it's time to bring in the percentage contribution of each category. So to do that, I'm gonna come back over here and let's make some changes to this particular measure. Instead of having the return statement over here, I'm going to assign the sum x value here to a variable. I'm gonna call this as cumulative underscore sales is equals to and now we need to have the denominator as well so let's identify the denominator so to do that i'm going to define another variable here i'm going to call this as denom underscore sales is equals to and then say calculate pass in my measure which is total sales i'm going to say all of the subcategory field that we have used in our table and by doing this, what is happening is basically if I type in my return statement and say denominator sales and confirm to this tax, you will see that we are getting the denominator that is the total value of our sales which we have selected in our 
table over here, which is 1331589. So now it's time to just divide our value. So to do that, what I'm gonna do here is use the divide function. And my numerator here is going to be the cumulative sales followed by a comma and now the denominator sales close the bracket here and confirm and now let's change this here to percentage and display two decimal values here and as you can see over here we have started to get the percentage values and now we can see that these are the categories here until fresh vegetables is where we are contributing to 80% of our total sales amount. And these are your remaining 20% of the categories which are contributing to the sales amount. So now it's time for us to change this into a line and column chart. So to do that, let me add another page over here. Let me choose the line and clustered column chart. Let me expand this and now bring in the subcategory over here, subcategory and the cumulative and the total sales. So now I have all of my total sales over here. Let me quickly add in the data labels as well so that this is visible. And now what we can do is I'm gonna come over here into my build a visual tab and bring in the cumulative sales that we created into my Y axis. And as you can see over here, we've created that line over here, which is basically saying that these are the categories which have contributed. So if you want to identify what's the 80% cutoff mark, so here you can, let's make some changes here to the line chart. Let's go into the format tab and turn on the markers over here so that it is clearly visible now. And now with the help of the new slicer button, you'll be able to toggle the line on and off. So let's see how we can create that. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the home tab, click on enter data over here. Let's create a new table. I'm gonna call this as on slash off. You can give it whatever name that you want. And I'm gonna call this as switch and just give any random values over here. Let's just give on and off for now and click on confirm. Now let's create a new slicer over here, the new button slicer, and then I'm gonna bring in the switch button that we just created, and let's create another measure to check if we have selected that particular slicer or not. Let's just call this as button is equals to, I'm gonna define a variable over here, and I'm gonna call this as check is equals to, if is filtered, I'm gonna pass in the switch column that I have created over here. If this is filtered, then return on, else return off. I'm gonna close the bracket over here, and then I'm gonna have a return statement over here, which basically checks if my check underscore is equals to on, then it needs to return the cumulative sales measure that we have created, else it just needs to return a blank. I'm gonna close the bracket here and confirm. Now that we've created this particular measure over here, it's now time for us to add those buttons into our slicer. So let's go into the format section of the slicer and then let's get into the buttons over here under the fill section. I'm gonna click on browse. Over here, I have those two buttons over here. I'm gonna select the off button first over here and now let's change the image fit to fill and also let's scroll up and then call out values. I'm gonna turn them off so that you don't see those values over here. And let's also go to the slicer settings, sorry, under layout and change this to one row and one column so that this appears slightly bigger. And let's also turn off the title over here. And when you resize this particular slicer over here, you see that the image getting resized automatically. You can also play around with the uh, option over here which is image fit and fill and for now let's leave it at fill for now and now during the default state I want that particular off button to appear and when I change this to selected state that's when I want to have the on button selected so let me click on browse again and now this time I'm going to choose the on button over here and click on open and let's change the image fit to fill. Let's also scroll down over here and turn off the border here for both the states, which is selected and default. I'm gonna turn off the border over here. So when I click on this slicer over here, it is now switching between on and off. However, there is no change seen on the chart. So to bring that change or to make this line disappear when you turn off, what you have to do is you will have to bring in the measure that we created instead of adding the cumulative sales measure into our y-axis 
This time we need to add the button slicer that we created which is basically checking if we have filtered then return cumulative sales else return a blank statement. So I'm going to add the button here into my Y axis now and you see that when it is turned on we have the line appearing over here and when I toggle this to turn it off the line disappears on this particular chart. Also we have to change the formatting of our button over here to percentage and you can choose the number of decimals to choose over here and now we are displaying one decimal over here. There are also a lot of options that are available here for you to play around with in terms of the size of the marker, the shape of the marker and um, the data labels etc. So you can play around with this and see what suits your requirement. So this is how you can create the Pareto chart which will help you understand what is your 80% and 20% contribution to your sales amount. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.